Start, no, nope, there we go. <laughs> I did it again. She's like, it's starting, so I started talking. <laughs> it wasn't started at all. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Um, was it? It's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. It's so a long day. Block of the week. Um, and we've got a really nice, interesting block for you today. Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody okay? Yeah, I hope so. All, hopefully you're good. Weather is rubbish again to here today. Really grey and cloudy and a bit not very nice. Um, but never mind. Um, spent lots of time last night putting some new videos onto YouTube. So all of the Facebook Lives, um, I, I was I forgot to do it. So I think I put about six or seven on there last night. So there's uh, lots of ways for you to re-watch me and Sarah as much as you like. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you all a little favour as well, if you would. Um, you know, if you like the service that we're giving you, uh, if you're getting your parcels on time, if you're, you know, ordering and blah blah blah, and all the rest of us, and you'd like to help in some way, if you could pop on to the Facebook page and leave us a review, that would be amazing. If you could pop onto Google and leave us a Google review, that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, it all just helps us. It just helps with our exposure. It just helps people know that of what we're doing. Um, so yeah. So if you're uh, if you've got ten minutes free later on and um, you wanted to, if you go just on a Google page, put White Gecko Craft Lounge in. Um, there's a place that you can. There's a little bit on there that you can review us, which would just be amazing. So yeah. Obviously, you know, if you're not happy with us, please don't. <laughs> But if you are happy with what we've been doing, um, you know, in our service and stuff, that would be a real help to us. That helps with our marketing. It helps with our exposure and stuff. It keeps us going. Keeps us, uh, keeps our little shop uh, out there in a, you know, in a, what's the word, on track. So, um, so yeah, um, just a little, uh, just a blatant plea for reviews, frankly. <laughs> so how are you all? Who's, who's coming online? Who's there today? So here we go. Beth, we got Sonia, we got Wendy, Liz, Suzanne. Oh, hi Marianne, everybody. Sue Hart as well. Lovely. Hi Sue. And hi Davis, everybody. Grace, loads of people. She lovely, lovely, Thank lovely. You. Fabulous. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining us. So um giving everybody a chance to come online, haven't we? If um what were what was I gonna say? So we're gonna be doing the I'm gonna slip my tea. My throat's really quite scratchy today. It's flipping hay fever. So we're going to be doing um, the block of the week and we're going to do the garden trail block. So I did put the cut instructions on our Facebook page yesterday for those of you who want to actually sew along with me. If not, obviously just watch us back. Watch us back and sew at your own place. Um, so I haven't made one up because it's one from this manor house. OK, so um, we're going to do a slight variation of this block. Now, if I hold this up, hopefully you can see. Hopefully Drew can get it. You can see that we've got these lovely like arrows happening here. We're going to do a slight variation with the, the centre, but it's going to be a, a variation of this block. OK, um, if I'm completely honest, I just haven't had time to actually I wrote the pattern and adapted it and cut all the pieces. And I just didn't have time to actually sew up uh, one. So um, we're I'm going to sew it up today. But I thought, well, I've got that one to show you. So we don't need don't need both website as normal the pattern will be on there uh, in fact it's already on there i put it on this morning patterns on the website it's called garden trail block in the isolation block bit um two pound as usual okay so you are going to need out of your background fabric you ready for all this you're going to need eight two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles so you need eight in your background fabric and then you need 12 two and a half by two and a halfs okay so that's that bit out of your background out of color a which is going to make the the arrow bits okay so i've gone with a nice dark one because i think it looks quite nice if it's it's quite sort of sharp and the contrast works really well so you want four two and a half by four and a halfs and checking my notes eight two and a half by two and a halfs okay so that's your fabric a fabric b you want four two and a half by two and a halfs, okay? And then fabric C, you want one four and a half inch square, okay? So because that's a biggish one, you could go with a, a nice focal fabric or something with that one, okay? You know, and really fussy cut the center because that's gonna be right dead center. So we're gonna start with some flying geese. I know we've done 
flying geese before but it's one of those things okay it's uh, one of those blocks that is units that is used in so many quilt patterns um and i think it's always good for a little reminder so we're going to take the four fabric a rectangles to start with okay and we want eight of our background squares so one two three four five six seven eight eight of those and i'm going to draw a line diagonal line on the back of each of these okay so let's move these bits out of the way so while i'm doing that who's saying hello uh linda pin says flat box uh, <laughs> it is a nice block actually it works really well it's a slight optical illusion in it which is really nice you'll see it i think you'll see it more distinctly when we're doing these colors because uh I've got much more contrast with it than I did originally. So, um, anybody else there? Uh, Mary Turner Lewis says hello. Hi, Mary. How are you? Uh, Maria okay. said I have to cut my fabric off. <laughs> oh, that's all right, lovely. Cut your fabric up, and then uh, you can watch me back later. If you well, yeah, you can put me on mute. You can just watch what I'm doing rather than listen. Nobody needs to listen to me twice in a day. There we go. So I'm just popping a diagonal line right the way across each one of these. Okay, let's get rid of those threads because that's going to be annoying otherwise. There we go, like that. Okay, now I'm going to chain piece these for quickness. So I'm going to do, turn this towards you. So on each of these four rectangles, on the left hand side, I'm going to pop a block. And one of these little background ones. So take note of which way the lines go in, okay? So we're going that way. So that's you, okay? So it's upside down for me. <laughs> but I'm going to pop those in like that. All go in the same way. And we are going to stitch down that drawn line, okay? So I'm going to take them over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down those four. Take those with me. Oh, it's going all my threads here. Let's just get rid of all that nonsense. There we go. So, oh, <laughs> front, door, front room door is open, dining room door's open, and uh, <laughs> I can hear everybody in the kitchen making cups of tea and things. <laughs> I mean, everybody. It's chaos in this house. So, there we go. So, all I'm going to do is just stitch down those drawn lines. So, while I'm doing this, anybody there, what are you all up to? It says, hi, is your trouble logging on? Oh, bless you. Hopefully you've got us now, though. Ooh. Oh, here's me saying I'm going to chain piece. My machine just decided to eat that one. Okay, so that happens sometimes because of the point. Because I'm because I'm going through a point like that, the feed dogs can cut, um, sort of catch it and cause, cause it to ruckle up. So I'm just going to start a little bit further down, and that won't happen then. There we go. Okay, that happens a lot. You can use a little leader. You know, um, I know that um, Marilyn, um, you always have to use a leader on your machine, don't you? Um, which just means that you have to um, put a little piece of fabric through first to kind of get the threads going, and then feed your feed your piece actually in. The other thing you can do, if that happens a lot, and a lot of it's to do with the plate on your machine, is to buy a straight stitch plate um, if you're going to do a lot of piecing. You've got to be careful with that if you change to do zigzag or decorative stitches because your needle will hit the plate then. But a straight stitch plate actually works really, really well if you do a lot of straight sewing. You don't get any of that chewed up bit. Okay. So, there we go. Let's whip these ones Part. and then I'm gonna come on that was all caught up grab my scissors and then we're gonna cut off the excess so just like we've done before, prior we're gonna cut off about quarter of an inch excess just to give myself a small seam allowance like that that one and that one and that one there we go and then the last one, and then we can press them open. So, hopefully, you're all going to be very familiar with 
flying geese after all of these isolation quilt blocks. <laughs> it's one of those um, you know standard things that most blocks have in flying geese or half square triangles. You know, it's a it's a really well used unit. Okay, so again, just be careful when you're pressing them out. I have starched my fabrics previous you know prior to cutting them, and then just press them out gently. Okay. So. So once we've finished filming here, uh, I've got to whip back over to the shop with Drew and we've got to film a little video for Hachanda. We've got to, I forgot I had to do it <laughs> and suddenly remembered this morning in the shower. I kept waking up thinking, why is the 11th? Why is the 11th, uh, you know, important? I knew there was something I was missing. It's because I've got to get a video in by tomorrow. Um, they do like a spotlight thing once a month on different um, suppliers. And they asked me 10 days ago, would you send a little demo video in? Oops. <laughs> right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is pop this one, the other background square, like that, on the right hand side, and take note of which way the lines go in. Remember, it should overlap this one at the top, okay? So I'm going to chain piece all of those ones. So again, that's facing you, okay? So it should look that way. So while I'm doing this little bit, who's there? Anybody, anybody having a chat today? Yeah, the quilt behind you is getting a bit of popularity. Ah, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? I love this one. This was made by Leslie. Um, it's the scrappy log cabin quilt that we did um, as a class, and I took onto her chanda. Um, uh, when was it? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago was it? I was on, um, and we did kit for it. Uh, we have got still got the kits. We can we can do your kit up for it, or we've got the pattern, which I will get onto the website actually. Um, but originally these blocks were all the, in fact, actually, stay there, I'll grab the other one, and you can see. So originally it was like this, I won't open it up totally, so you can see that, oh, here we go ladies, you can see, so originally it's written, it was written, so they all sat really, really scrappy, but sat that way. And Leslie decided that she was going to not only sort her scraps out so they went rainbowed, so rather than being completely scrappy, she sorted her scraps to a certain extent, so she got the rainbow. But she asked me to write it so that it could be put on point, so I worked out how to put it on point for her, so that the, the block turned so they're that way round. It's stunning, isn't it? I think she just did, it's one of the prettiest things that she's, she's done, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then we popped it on Daphne for her, so it's been quilted on Daphne. But yeah, I thought I'd showcase, I should, you know, I try and change up the background every couple of days for you. And uh, I just thought this one needed a little bit of a, a little bit of a showcase from our Les. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry, we'll get back to this now after I've uh, oudinard over that. <laughs> Tina asks, do you, uh, do you serve sewing machine? Do you service? service, sorry, uh, sewing machines, or can you recommend anywhere? Um, Tina, are you in Bristol? You're She's in Bristol, said, aren't yes, you? Bristol. Uh, we don't service sewing machines. We have a chap in Caffilly that Dave, uh, DW Sewing, um, he's brilliant, he's fab. He comes to the shop, people drop off their machines with us. He comes to the shop, picks them up, and then drops them off. Um, you're best off if you're in Bristol, lovely, um, looking at somebody local. Um, particularly at the moment they might be they might come and do a pickup and drop off service for you um we i can give you a, i will pop a link onto dave's website but he's a caffili so it's a, it's a bit of a trek so i can't imagine that would be very useful for you i'm afraid um great god google is probably your best bet to find someone local uh, um any other questions there? Well, I'm just putting these other little sides on. Linda Pinch asks, do you ever stop? Me? No. <laughs> no. No, sleep is for the week. <laughs> no, I don't stop. Although I am planning on having a totally lazy... So I've got Thursday, Friday... No, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off this week. One of those days, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to probably have a pyjama day. Well, actually, no, I can't. I can't do pyjama days. I will have a shower and I'll put comfies on, you know, but bare leggings and a, a T-shirt. And... I'm going to watch, catch up with some stuff on TV, I might read a book, I'm going to do absolutely nothing all day. I'm going to have a complete shut off day. <laughs> I'm going to put a cover over this so I'm not looking at her. But no, I don't stop, love. <laughs> if 
find sitting still very difficult very difficult you know it's uh, even when I'm watching TV I've always got a bit of hand sewing or crocheting or something on the go um, yeah just just my makeup I'm a I'm a busy person <laughs> so done all that down each side Okay. Liz asked, one of the magazines had a, fr a free flying keys template slash ruler gift. Oh, it looks right. very complicated. Would you recommend this? Um, I've never particularly got on with any of the flying keys templates or rulers. I know um, Kath Lem uh, swears by her. She's got, a, I think it's one of the Creative Grids flying keys rulers and absolutely loves it. Really, really loves it. Um, I've never had a never really had a problem doing it like this or doing the four in one method so never had a need for them it's worth giving a go if it was a freebie off the front of a magazine ha you know i would imagine in the magazine is it they've got how to use the the ruler give it a little go lovely um i'm not sure that i would unless you really struggle with flying geese or you know you really want you really want to i wouldn't necessarily buy anything but if they were freebie ones why not go for it try them yeah, you might find that it works really well for you. Uh, Andy asks, I, um, sorry, I need a quote finishing on, uh, sorry, I need to finish quoting something on Daphne. How soon will you be able to come and do it for me? Or can I give it to you to do? You can give it to us to do. Um, we can't let people in the shop at the moment. We can't have anybody in using Daphne for hire. We can take it off you, but there is about a six week waiting list at the moment. I think I've got 11, I mean, we're doing one or two a week at the moment because obviously we're so busy, but we're, we're in us, you know, in between me and Sarah, we are getting getting through the list, but it's, we're saying four, four to six weeks, nearer six weeks at the moment, wait list for, for Daphne, um, purely because so many people want, want them done and I've got a pile, I think it's 11 there that we're gradually working through um, bit by bit, so it is a bit of a wait and obviously we can't let anybody in at the moment, so um, uh, but if you want us to do it and you want to go onto the list, give us a shout okay, and we can get it done, but it's not going to be like next week, okay um, right, sorry back to this a second, so I've made four flying geese that way Okay, so with the dark fabric and my background squares, I'm now going to make four flying geese in the opposite colourway. So I'm going to use four of my background rectangles and I want eight of my colour A. Okay, so again, I'm going to, I'm afraid you're going to have to talk amongst yourselves a second while I draw my lines. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm going to switch back over here to do my lines, it'd be much, much easier. So, um, any other questions or anything there while I'm just doing this? Catherine says I'm a gadget girl. You are a gadget girl. And you have some good gadgets as well. You know, obviously. But you really like that Creative Grids ruler, don't you? I know you've because you've um you've struggled a little bit with flying geese sometimes, getting the sizes and stuff right. But I know you swear by it, which uh it's brilliant. You know, if it works for you, love, you go for it. Absolutely. Sam just put I have a frying grease ruler. Yep. Gre frying grease. A frying grease ruler. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Catherine um, just commented on it. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, yeah. But to go back to Liz's original comment, you know, absolutely. Some people love them and swear by them. Um, I've never really felt a need for one, but there's nothing wrong with them at all. If you want to want to give them a go, go for it. So. I should have probably drawn these lines yesterday, shouldn't I? Sandra said, yep, it's been a long day. <laughs> Already? It's only just gone one, love. Maybe you need a liquid lunch. Maybe you need a G&T with your lunch today. Okay, so, draw my lines on there. I'm going to do exactly the same. So I want four flying geese with this one. So I'm going to, just like I did with the last ones, I'm going to pop this one on the left-hand side and I'll do this towards you again. So hopefully you can just about see that line. I can I can see it. Okay. So I'm going from my from there to there, and I'm going to do that on all of them. Flip them out and go the other way. Okay. So we're going to flip this over back to the back to the what's this what's this thing sewing machine? Back to the sewing machine. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh my goodness. That's ridiculous. As 
I forget my own name, forgetting the name of the sewing machine. <laughs> Um, Andy said, okay, another six weeks won't matter, so yes, please, I'll bring it over to you, thanks. Uh, yeah, so if you want to drop it off, um, you're welcome to, obviously you can't let you in the shop, but if you want to drop off, you can bring it to the shop and we can we can take it at the door for you, okay? Um, we tend to be there between tw 10 and 12 each day, okay, at the moment. Um, I can't guarantee we'll be there after that because of... You know, one o'clock and Sarah's doing deliveries um, and like you know Zoom classes and stuff. Okay, between ten and twelve, you can drop it off. But you can give us a give us a call. Okay, and you okay? So just going down all one side, chain piece in that one. Okay. And I know this is a little bit dull for you guys to watch at the moment because it's all very similar, but you'd be surprised how this all comes together in a moment. So, there we go. It's one of those blocks, again, that looks really complicated, but actually when you break it down into individual units, really not. So, there we go. Fab. So again, I'm going to trim off that excess just like we did the first one and then iron them out. Okay, so I've just trimmed off that excess seam allowance. And of course you can use a rotary cutter if you want, but this is just as quick. There we go. Bring that one I like that. Get rid of those bits. I'm just going to quickly press these out and then I will put the other side on. And then we can move on to the next little unit. So, any other questions or anything there, Drew? Anybody having a chat about anything today? Uh, Nikki, if you're there, how's your new machine? How's your new machine, Nikki? Have you had new Janome arriving? Have you had, had time to have a play with it yet? I think she was like, I oh, saw her earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jackie Ireland says hello, everyone. Hi, Jackie. How are you, lovely? How's uh, how's Brum? How's it up there? What's the weather like today? Have you got a uh, got some sunshine? Because we haven't got any here. It's horrible. <laughs> but it's quite warm, but it's a bit grey. A bit grey out there. So. so all I'm doing now, just like I did with the others, is putting this one on this side. Okay. Okay, we'll pop that one onto there, and then that one onto there. And get these done quick. Oh, did that one the wrong way round then? So, anybody else there? And Andy says ten to twelve. I'll drop it off on Friday. Brilliant, fab. Yeah, Sarah should be in the shop then. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, just drop it off, that'll be fabulous, and we'll uh, add it to the pile. <laughs> So again, just sewing down those lines, and oh, that one's just moved a wee bit. Let's move that over. Sewing down the lines, just on the drawn lines, just like we did the other one. So who's excited for sewing bee tonight? Oh, I was determined I was going to remember what it was, and I've never forgotten already. No, can't remember. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me what it is. Um, Jackie says no sunshine but not cold. Been sat in Sarah's garden, changed from ours. Ah, nice. Ah, oh, nice and oh, no, just chewed out. Why are you chewing stuff up? The machine's decided it's gonna chew stuff up today. It doesn't normally do that. Why is it misbehaving? Definitely misbehaving. It's an indication for a new machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to your stepdad then. <laughs> Philip, if you listed, <laughs> you definitely need a new one. I don't think I can convince Phil. <laughs> no, it's fine. He said that I can have one. I've just got to, just got to, maybe that's what I'll do this, this weekend, actually, is uh, um, get one ordered while I've got some time. It's just purely been the fact I haven't had a chance to get on and compare some prices and, and pick one. Yeah, well, I know which one I want, so. Everyone says International Week on so and B. Oh, yes, I remember now. Yes, see, the minute you say it, I go, do <laughs> uh, Yes, because I remember them see it. When they do, like, national dress, they were doing flamenco dresses, I think, in the trailer or something like that. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It must be coming coming towards the end soon as well. Because what are they down to? About six, is it? Five or six? Um, I think it was so a shame that um, Therese went. Um, I don't think she did particularly well 
this last week but um, I do think she was one of the more competent sewers I do think she was very skilled I think it was just a time thing with her wasn't it it's just a real time element thing she didn't didn't quite cope with the cope with that I've told my mum that I'm just going to fill out the application for her and make her do it she told me she'd kill me she'd never speak to me if I did but I think I might just do it anyway and make her do it I think she'd be brilliant on it she's such a clever dress dressmaker my mum she's really really talented but yeah I should uh I should just do it shouldn't I and not tell her and then when uh if you know if she gets through to like the first round just pretend I'm taking her somewhere just end up at the studios and go there you go <laughs> right okie doke I don't think she should ever talk to you ever again <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to sew these two together so we're going to sew one from the first lot and one from the second lot together so we're going to pop them like that and can you see they make this lovely little arrow all right so i'm going to pop these right sides together and i'm going to stitch down a quarter of an inch but the thing you want to and hopefully you can see this can you see where this cross is here can you see where that two lines of um, stitch and cross you want to make sure that you are always this side of that cross because that's your point okay so you sew down your quarter of an inch and if you catch your quarter of an inch just that side you're going to lose your point so even if it means you sew down a quarter of an inch and you just come round this bit here it won't make any difference okay and then carry on with a quarter of an inch because that when you fold it over you won't have caught you won't have lost your seam and if you've just had to come round that little bit there it's only a couple of stitches and it, you really won't tell the difference in the sizing but it will just mean you keep your points okay so just going to quickly uh, Nikki yeah, said, that's why it was catching my bobbin was just about to go sorry me it isn't gonna have to just have i got another bobbin here Jeez, yeah go on talk Nikki, to me while i find a bobbin Nikki said stood in the box waiting for the new horn cabinet ah fair enough the instruction oh. book is 130 pages but <laughs> i have to read it oh that's some bedtime reading nikki <laughs> that's some hell of a bedtime reading sorry she girls i've got to do a new bobbin it's got a straight stitch plate that you mentioned earlier. nice it? they're really good a straight stitch plate is really really good um if you end up so what happens with mo with the normal plate you've got like quite a big hole where the needle goes in so that you can do your step zigzags and decorative stitches and obviously, if you've got a little area like that, which is being fed through, it can get dragged down in. So um, that's why it kind of sometimes, uh, some machines, you need a leader. But with a straight stitch plate, that little hole is tiny. It's just enough for the needle to go into, which means that you can, it doesn't drag any of the fabric in. You've just got to be really careful that you don't forget that you've got your straight stitch plate on and then go to zigzag. So obviously the needle just hits the metal, smashes. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, that's a good bedtime reading, that night like manual. Sorry ladies, I thought I had another bobbin ready and I didn't. So I'm just going to quickly do a bobbin. I don't know if I've ever said to you, quick, uh, always a tip when you're doing your bobbins is... Um, to do them at full speed even if you don't have your machine on full speed make sure you put it up to full full speed and put your foot flat to the floor on your pedal it tensions your bobbin properly okay um you know a lot of times you go oh machines aren't playing you know playing up it's one of the first things that um, an engineer will check they will run off a new bobbin at full speed to make sure it's tensioned properly and then put it through the machine because you'd be surprised how much it can affect your sewing um the tension on the bobbin okay. um, like I said I've broken my needle thread so I've got to thread the needle right okay we will get there I feel like I'm a bit of a, a bit behind today <laughs> right so I'm just going to stitch these together I'll put my pop my quarter inch foot on for easiness and go for it so I'm just making I'm putting one of these little flying ge geese on top of the other. oh come on don't be this machine does not like me today. It's not playing ball. It's having a sulk. It's because I keep talking about getting a new one, I reckon. Right, okay. It feels betrayed. It feels, it does. It's, having, it's playing up. It's having a sulk. There we go. Probably needs a service. That's the problem. It's going to need a little service because it's been so well used. And it hasn't had one for well over a year now. So 
Um, so I'm doing, so I'm putting that one on top of that one so it looks like that. Okay, I'm going to make four of these little units. Are you all still with me? I feel like I'm wittering on today. I'm not actually doing much sewing. I mean, I know we're witter on normally, but wittering on more than usual. Okay, just make sure that goes down. There you go. Suzanne said, my genome won't let me do a zigzag with another plate in. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good that the it knows that um it knows what plate it's on. That's that's a fancy machine. <laughs> there we go, let's get that one down. Line it up. Down that line like that. So I'm just lining them up and making sure I'm not hit not going over that little cross on the back. So that's gonna go like that. Get rid of that there. And that's these little units done. Okay. There we go. Down that one. Turn, turned her right down. I've got hiccups as well. Turned her right down to slow because uh, she's she misbehaving today. She is. Doesn't want to play ball. And then we're just gonna iron that out. And it doesn't really matter which way you iron it out. Okay, really doesn't. I know that looks odd that you've lost lost that there, but obviously that will come into play when we join these together because that's your quarter inch seam allowance. And so don't panic about that bit if that's because that's supposed to be like that okay there we go so that one and then that one okay and the last one and then we can move on to the next little bit so i know that's taken a long time for us to get to this point <laughs> but uh, lots of chattering in between wasn't it so what we're going to do now is i'm going to slip my tea Otherwise, it's going to go cold. Is that on the pattern too? Pardon? Is that oh, pattern yeah, too? absolutely. It's written on the pattern. Slurp tea. So, now what we want to do is we want to make some little corner units. So, we're going to use our colour B two and a halves. And we're going to, now I'm going to do it towards you, okay? So, you want to make two that go like that. So, I'm going to sew this little one here, put them the right way around. To this one so that's my two and a half fabric B to a two and a half background and once those are sewn together I'm going to sew it to the two and a half by four and a half rectangle okay and I want to make two exactly the same all right like that with that one underneath like that and then I want to make want to make two that the opposite way okay so like that like that so still with the rectangle underneath, but these two are reversed. Okay, so it's going to go that way. Now, you could do them all like this because we're going to turn them, but this piece would be in a different position. And I didn't like that. The seams didn't look quite right. So I've done it that we, ooh, we do that. Okay, and then this piece sits nicely. So that one to that one each time. So there and there. And there and there and absolutely I've, I've done it like this as well for directional fabric because you could make all of these if this was non-directional you could make all these and just turn it like that before you sew it to that but because I've got directional fabrics I wanted to to make it really clear the way they needed to go hopefully that that's that makes sense to you all okay um, if it's non-directional you can just sew them together and, and turn them so those two and then those two so back to the machine and again these are just a quarter inch seam allowance as usual okay so we're going to go like that and we're going to whip down that one sorry it is a little bit slow now because i've turned my machine right down because he's she's playing up she's playing up she is there we go And do these two. Okay. 
Okay, anybody there? Anybody having a chat? Uh, Laura says, you're doing brilliant, nice to see you encountering some of the prob uh, real life, sorry, some of the real issues that pop up at Oh, times. God, yeah, love. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> it's all stuff that happens all the time, isn't it? And it happens to all of us, you know. I mean, these are not edited. These one o'clock lives are not edited, <laughs> as you will have noticed, in any way, shape or form. So, yeah, it's uh, one of those things. I probably, because I, I did a lot of sewing masks and... Um, sewing of jeans the other day, jean, uh, denim material. It probably needs a new needle as well. That's probably why she's being a bit, a bit naughty. So I'm gonna press it out towards the dark fabric. I'm just gonna finger press it for quickness, like that. So I should have two that way, and then two that way. I'm just press, finger pressing it towards the dark fabric, like that. And then I'm gonna put one of these rectangles on the bot on the bottom. So that's to you, okay, on the bottom of each one. Like that. And I always try and be a bit prepared and have an extra bobbin, but I've done so much sewing the last few days, I obviously didn't realise there's another one done. Uh, Okey doke. There we go, so that one's going on there like that. Just making sure I'm doing them the right way round. As you can see, again, a really easy little unit, you know, a really easy little piece. But when it all comes together, it makes the block look, you know, like it's more complicated than it actually is. And that one's going that way. Uh, making sure they're on the bottom again. So who, going back to Sony, who do we think is going to win? Who do you think is, is going to be the winner? I... I think I'd quite like it to be Liz. I quite like her. I like, I like the fact she's got her own little style and she seems quite a competent sewer. So I think that's who I'd like to win. Um, and I quite like the chap that's still in it as well. Um, the one who does, oh, I can't think what his name is. Does the drag queens costumes. I think he's um, he's really cool as well. I quite like his stuff. Uh, right. Going to iron these out and we can start putting the whole block together. Okay. So, again, I would iron it to the the piece I've just added, the rectangle, just because of the bulk. It uh, makes it a lot easier. So, iron it out that way. And again, with that one, iron it out that way. And ooh, turn that one over. There we go. Right, okie doke. So, I'm going to lay it all out for you now. Now, in the original pattern, they'd done um, like this little quarter square triangle thing in the centre. Um, I've got a lot of fabrics that have got quite big patterns, so I thought, I don't want to do that. I want, I want to use a plain square in the centre. But you can play with this, okay? Just like we've said with lots and lots of others, you can absolutely play with this. So, we're going to lay this out. So my arrows, my, this that double little double flying geese unit that we made, is going to go like that. Okay, you can see how you've got that lovely continuation. And then these are going to go like this. Can you, sorry, groups, I'm making you work for it. Um, that's that one there. So can you? Hopefully, you can see. So if I'd have just flipped these, I could have done it so that. I flipped it so that was in the corner but the the rectangle is going this way and the rectangle is now going that way and that would have annoyed me and I know it shouldn't necessarily have annoyed me but it would have annoyed me so I'm doing it like that <laughs> so that they're opposite so that the rectangles are all going the same way okay and that was going to go on like that can you see how that blocks now come together okay so stitch that and Sorry, then the internet just went for a second, but it's come back. Oh, are you all there? You're still there, ladies. I think, I think we had a little little blip on the internet then. I think the signal might have gone. So hopefully this is what it should look like. Okay, so you've got your little double units with the flying geese. You've got those little units we made there. And I've just put a nice four and a half inch in the centre. You can play with this. In fact, actually, what time is it? 22. All right, okay. Um, I, I won't sew these bits together because you guys know how to do that. You've done that lots now. So you're going to sew this row together 
I'm going to sew that row together, sew that row together, iron them in opposite directions and then nest them in. OK, so it's, you know, it's the same as putting any of the other blocks that we've done together. But hopefully you can see how that's that's going to come together like that. You could play with this centre bit. OK, you could absolutely um, do like some quarter square triangles. You could do a little four patch in the centre. You could applique something in the centre. You know, there's nothing stopping you at all playing with that centre piece. Um, like I said, I've got quite big pieces, you know, big patterns on some of mine. So I quite like a plain block now and then just to to showcase those those pictures. Um, Drew particularly likes the ships and scenes is like boats. Yeah. Seems as he's requested the isolation quilt as his payment for uh, <laughs> for all this filming. Um, I thought it'd be nice just to have a piece that's got the, the little boats on it, okay? Um, I would, um, you could, you could play with these corner pieces. You know, they don't have to all be the same colour. They could be a different colour. I would keep this the same though. I wouldn't like do the flying geese there different to that. I think you get that lovely arrow look. So like a, is it a quatrefoil type look? Is that the right word? Might be, I might be making that up. But you get that look because you've got the two colours to get the same colour together. If that was different, it would give you a totally different looking block, which is fine if you're having a play. But if you want that very sort of arrow look, I would keep those the same. But you can play with the rest of it, you know. Play with, you could actually, if you kept the block there, the, those bits the same, you could make this a different colour. You know, so that it looks like you've got a square on square happening okay have a play with it have an experiment you know it's it's one of those you know all of the blocks that we do can look so different depending on what variations you do so that's the garden trail block ladies and gents any questions anything you want me to go through anything there no. Catherine says and the cushions but I'm not stealing the cushions <laughs> I want the cushions but I'm not the cushions mm. um, Linda says thanks I told you he has to make his own cushions we've got a little bit of that fabric left I should he can make his own cushions <laughs> uh, yeah Linda head says thanks both lots no of problem. tips too yeah oh, lots of me waffling on but thank you <laughs> cool um, we will be back um, tomorrow so we've got the zoom class starting at 10 10 might be 10 30 i can't remember now 10 i believe it is so if you're on the zoom class i'll see you then so between 10 and 12 we've got the zoom class starting and then i'll be back on it one and we're going to do some um really um quick and easy um animal uh, some cushions but with using the animal panels and i'm going to show you how to do a, re a mitered corner and a really big like oxford edge on it okay so i'm going to show you that and then as soon as I'm done with that, back onto the Zoom <laughs> to uh, finish up the Zoom class. So um, so I will see you on one o'clock tomorrow to do that. See the rest of you on the Zoom. Uh, and then it says on, on Friday, and she's doing a pineapple block, which is really cute. She's got different ways of doing it. She's had a little play with some different techniques. So uh, so she's got some different ways of showing you on that on Friday. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we're, I'm off to uh, grab a hot cup of tea because that one's gone cold. Um, and then we've got to whip back over the shop and do some more filming. I just all I do is talk to this phone. <laughs> talk to you guys. That's not true. That's not all I do at all. But it does feel like it sometimes. So um, I will see you all tomorrow, ladies and gents. Um, thanks for joining us again. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>